Hi, Greg Perry, the historic preservationist. Um, just want to introduce everyone to uh, to a friend here. Um, about 25 or in 1995, I built this clock, uh, one of 376. Uh, I built combination of a bonnet top, as we see here on the the floor, with a bonnet on the floor and flat top. Um, four to one bonnet top to flat top. A uh, client has re recently purchased this at auction. Um, the owners apparently have passed away. The clock has gone to auction and uh, has a new home. So I'm here to check out the clock to uh, take a look uh, what, what service needs, the mechanism. And obviously I was very interested to see the condition of the case after all these years. Um, it's obviously been very well taken care of. Uh, there's not a lot of sun damage on this. So we're just going to do a, a little video here and, and I'm just going to explain, I'm not going to take the clock totally apart, of how you would reassemble this clock. So first we're going to do a wind. We're gonna, uh, this is the only clock of 376 that I put a Westminster chime in. This was a Conninger, so early in the late 80s and 90s. I was putting a new mechanism, so I was green, I was learning. So by 96, 97, I, I shifted over to getting 18th century movements. And I bought, find a derelict movement with no case, restore the movement, and put it in my new cases. So I would say probably about 275 uh, of my clock cases have 18th century movements. Isn't it amazing that you can go out at that point and find one, such as a place like Merritt's Antiques and, and then and flea markets. And at, back in that point, I was paying 1200 1500 just for a movement alone. Generally, it didn't even have weights or a pendulum. had to be restored. So a uh, big difference today when you start looking at the auction market today and you're seeing, by God, we got clocks coming up at auction in a few weeks that are only going to sell for two to $300, a full clock with a functioning 18th century movement. But let's get back to the point here. So the point here is, uh, let, me, let me wind this up first. And I'm going to tell everyone, when, when you're winding it up, you don't have to take the hood off, but we're going to open the door up. We want to open the mid door up. We want to see where the weights are going. Okay, and we want to stop at a certain height, but I don't, I, some clients uh, grip this, grip the, uh, grip the crank, and, and they just go round and around holding the, this, and they slip, and they, you see scratch marks down the dial. I prefer to keep the thumb on the center shaft and do half turns like this. And you can see the weight coming up as I'm doing this. It takes longer, but at least you're not going to slip and scratch your painted dial, or you're not going to scratch your brass dial. So what I like to do is keep the pulley just above the line of the, the base cove hood molding right here. And some clients get a bit overzealous, you know, they, they start cranking away and they jam that pulley up under the seat board and they tend to bend the shaft, or they actually can bend the shaft of the pulley a little bit. So uh, I tell everyone just to take a slow hand when you're doing this. So this clock is at the point where it has not had service. I'm here to check on the service and uh, I think the, the, the mechanism is going to be pulled. Uh, I, it just appears that uh, you know the clients have probably ran this uh, maybe 10 years without a service, and it, it is a need. And sometimes all you need to do is to put your your uh, your hand, your finger, at the back back plate of the of the mechanism, find one of the great arbors, run your finger, index finger, and take a look. And if you see black grease, which I have earlier on this, that's telling me that this is in dire need of, of a cleaning, a good servicing. So. And what we don't want to do at this point is we don't want to go and re-oil that when you're seeing black on your finger. Because if you do that, you're, you're finding pieces of brass and other abrasions, silica, silicates that are found in the air that are creating a grinding paste as the oil has been drying out, creating a grease. If we hydrate that with oil right now, we're going to float all those abrasives around the shaft, around the arbor, and we're going to start to grind it down. So when we see these indications of... Uh, of uh, you know the, the oil drying out, we need to take the mechanism apart and clean it, and reassemble it and synchronize it.
And we also want to look forward to these, these clocks that are in the 20 to 25 year old range when, when they're, utilizing a, they're utilizing a cable, like a braided cable like this, a braided cord or cable. And this is in, the, this is in steel um, that I'm feeling some burrs here. So that's telling me the cable is start, starting to suffer a little bit of a breakdown. So if I find one of these and one of the weights, I'm going to tend to um, demand that the client replace all three. And what also happens if this is a, a mechanism with a chain pull to, to raise the weights up, that sometimes when, it, when a client is heavy handed and they grab the chain and I tell them to lift the weight and pull the chain, but sometimes they just want to pull down on the chain. And when they do that, you know, um, week after week after week, they're tending to stretch the lengths of the, the links of the chain. And eventually the links will not mesh on the cogs of the great wheels. And there could be a time when they actually slip off and the weight descends through the bottom of the clock. So that's always something I'm looking for at a, ser a service point, um, stretch chains or fraying of cables. Take your time because there's, there's, there's no one in the country uh, that has a, a good quality hand of restora rest restoring these dials if you tend to scratch it. So. Okay, so we're, we're pretty even. So, um, so the first thing, we're not gonna take this apart, but I'm just gonna do a little explanation here. You bring the case, you bring the case in. You actually shim the case, um, you get the case nice and vertical, you get it plumb, vert, you know, vertical, both ways, which is plumb. So you don't want it leading side to side or front to back. We have some shims under here just to keep it in that order right now. The next thing, we would grab the seat board and place the seat board on the vertical uprights of the side. So we pick that mechanism up and we place it there. But for this one, we have to be very careful because we have half this you just again. So we're back to saying, we get the case plumb, we bring the mechanism, hold the mechanism under the seat board and place it, center it. But be very careful with the mechanism like this. This is a, a you know, Westminster chime. You have hammers on both sides of the mechanism and you have your chime rods as you can see there. So you need to go straight back without catching and bending any of the chime rods. Otherwise you're going to have to bend them back and put the clock in tune again. So sit, sit this down. On some mechanisms, more of the period mechanisms, they're front heavy, they're top heavy. So by putting this here, this mechanism could just be teetering. I learned the hard way, just teetering on the edge and wanting to fall over because it's got so much mass in the dial. So just be, be quite aware. What I like to do is I like to have the pendulum assembly planted in the, the, uh, the, the lower case here. So after I put the mechanism, I'm holding the mechanism, I'm lifting the pendulum, I'm going to the side, and I connect it to the crutch, so to the leader. So I connect the pendulum up. So usually a pendulum on a period, not so much on this clock, but a period clock has enough weight in the bob to keep that secure. So I can take my time and, and, and go down to the weights and come up and I can hook the weights up. So it's level the case, carefully place the movement, get it front center. And a lot of times um, after I put the pendulum on and before the weights, I'm going to lift the bonnet or the hood and put it up there and make sure this is in the center of the bonnet left to right or front to back. It's not pushing the hood out too much. And I'll do that before I actually put the weights on. So, so one more time, level the case, carefully pick the mechanism up by the seat board and never pick the mechanism up by the dial. Never, because that's usually planted on there by four or five posts. And if you bend the post, then your, you know, your winding holes are not going to line up and your center shaft is not going to line up anymore. And you're going to have to pull it back down. And sometimes where the posts are attached to the back of the dial, it's going to start cracking the paint. So never lift the mechanism by the post. And then put, to pen, put your pendulum on and then we're going to lift the bonnet 
and you can adjust side to side, front to back, where the, the mechanism should be, and then place your weights on. So, and this, as I recall, I made this many, many years ago. This guy is very heavy. So make sure you have a good grab up on the top. Never hold it by the colonnettes and by the bottom. And put it on and just slide it back. And there's two stops. There's a stop on either side that prevents this hood from coming front as you're sliding it out. It catches right there. So just slide it back on. And you can see it's equidistant between, uh, you know, between the mask or the dial frame. And uh, that's what we're looking for. So. And I, I, I tell individuals one last thing. Don't rely too heavily on using the, the, uh, the key too much. These are good locks. The locks that I've made, or well, not made, I made the locks, the locks that I've used for the last 27 years have been all made in England. But what happens sometimes as the heating season goes up and down, the clock case expands and contracts. The door moves, the frame moves, and then here you're thinking, oh, I got this guy locked, and then you know you don't you come back a week later, the heat's been on, and you say, Well, it won't it won't go, and the lock is stuck and I can't open it. So people get into situations where they can't get in their clocks. There's no reason to look to lock this. It's a decorative feature, but it's also a handle to open your door. So just shut your door, don't use the lock, do yourself a favor. So anyway, a little bit of lessons from an old friend I just got to meet again from 1995. Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist, signing out.